Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy and welcome to the last lap and man oh man do we have an incredible race weekend to unpack from Coda. We're going to talk about all three series, what happened in each race, especially the cup race because man oh man that was a heck of a finish. But before we hop into it, I just want to remind you guys to hit that like button and subscribe button. That would really help us out and we would greatly appreciate it. And you can check it out on our Instagram page at The Last Lab News. And Matthew, man, that was a heck of a race today. We're recording this after the cup race, obviously. And that was one of the best cup finishes I've seen in a while. So it's great to see everything that happened this weekend. So it has a feel to have the first road course race of the season in the books. Well, this was an amazing weekend. Like I said before, Circuit in Americas was one of my favorite racetracks. And this was a, a big test for the next gen car, the road courses. And th these, what, these are what these cars are really made for. And I think it passed some flying colors today as we had one amazing show today. And I cannot wait to talk about it more. Yeah, it was a great race weekend. Sorry, I stepped away for a minute because I have to quickly show off the uh, new diecast I got. I celebrated my birthday with my family this weekend. It was on Wednesday, so what? very quickly. I already know you're going to roast me for this one, so I'm going to get it out of the way. But I did get Chase Elliott's Bristol Dirt raced version. Yes, I know he finished like in the top 10 with this race car. but The most pointless race version of all time, everyone. But I wanted to get it because it's a... You know, it's a Bristol dirt car. It has all the dirt on it. It's got some damage. I didn't know we were uh, making die cuts for people who finished 10th. Okay. But anyways, I got that one, and then I got this one right here, which is kind of ironic because it is, in fact, a Kevin Harvick die cast, but this is the <clears throat> Gravedigger Nashville uh, standard paint scheme, and man, this car is absolutely crazy. It's got now the Gravedigger on it and all that kind of stuff. It's so nice, so... Had to show those off. Yeah, I got super to see quick. that car in, in person at Nashville last year. Yes, you did. You did get to see that paint scheme run at Nashville, but just had to show off those real quick. Uh, it was a great birthday weekend. So I was I watched most of the Coda Cup race today. I was a tiny bit. I had to leave for a few minutes and I'd come back and check on stuff. But I think I got most of the important stuff down, especially the finish. But uh, real quick, let's talk about the truck and Xfinity race, and then we'll hop into everything from the cup race today. The truck race went into double overtime, and heading into turn 11, which is one of the hairpin turns, uh, Alex Bowman went to make a pass on Stuart Friesen, and Stuart Friesen tried to shoot at the middle three wide and try to pass Kyle Busch, and all three of them made contact. They went up the track. Zane Smith just went by all three of them, and he would drive on to win the truck race, so... Cool for him to get uh, Front Row Motorsports their second win in a row at Coda in the Truck Series. So that was cool to see him get the win. His second win of the season, too. Uh, in the Xfinity Series race, uh, AJ Allmendinger dominated most of the race. He won the first stage. Had to go back in traffic, work his way back up through the field. And he had to hold off uh, quite a few hard charges from, like, Ross Chastain, Cole Custer, a few other guys in the field. Uh, but he would win the Xfinity race after several late race restarts and that was the same case today there were several late race restarts today but AJ Allmendinger got the win there so Matthew what do you have to uh, quickly say about the truck and Xfinity race I know you're not too happy with the result of the truck race so you can just briefly touch on that if you want but uh, what do you think of those two races before we hop into the cup race well for the truck race uh, congratulations to uh, Zane Smith second win the season is a uh, really big for that team Bravo Motorsports, of course, is in the Cup Series and the Truck Series, so it's great to see them win in other series that's not the Cup Series. So it's great for them. I'm not going to really talk too much about it. I already, I already ranted in front of him yesterday. I do not want to do that all over again, so that, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> but, um, yeah... But as for the Xfinity Series, um, A.J. Allmendinger, of course, the best road course racer in the Xfinity series. I know Ty Gibbs has won a couple, but he's not on that level of A.G. Allmendinger yet. <laughs> but um, it was great to see A.G. Allmendinger win his first win this season in Xfinity. And um, let's we'll see how he does um, on the other, how he does the rest of the season. He's he look 
he, as far as uh, his his start of the season goes, he's qualified up front, but he has kind of he's kind of been a little bit quiet so far. So it's great to see him in victory lane. Yeah, unfortunately, I got the uh, bad end of the stick after the truck race. I I kind of provoked you, and <laughs> you're quite frustrated with Alex Bowman. But I mean, honestly, I think that was Stuart Friesen's Ooh. fault because I think Bowman was trying to pass Friesen. And Friesen was like, ah, screw it. I'm going to go three wide through the middle of both of you, these guys. But, I don't know, it, it was a racing incident, obviously. But, uh, yeah, none of them got the good end of the stick there. Um, but yeah, A.J. Allmendinger. Oh, yes. I would argue A.J. Allmendinger is the best road course racer in any of the series. Truck, Xfinity, or Cup. Uh, he's just very good at road courses. Dominated the Xfinity oh, race. True. He was up there today in the Cup race a lot. So, I think A.J. Allmendinger is the best road course racer in any of the three series so good to see him get that win hopefully he can transfer that to more road courses and maybe the ovals in the next mini series this year but now we're going to hop into the cup race and this was such an up and down race as road courses are i always go into road courses thinking you know it's going to be a predictable road course race but there are there's always so much chaos especially with you know the stages now and everybody pitting before the stages People trying to get stage points, all that kind of stuff. So that really shakes things up throughout the race. Uh, Ryan Blaney and Daniel Suarez, they started on the pole. Um, and jumping out to the start of this race, Daniel Suarez looked fast from the get-go. I mean, he was fast in practice and qualifying, but he hopped out to the lead. Uh, he won stage one. He led every single lap in stage one, which was, I think, 13 or 15 laps or something like that. Uh, he jumped out to the lead. Uh, Ryan Blaney looked pretty good early. Alex Bowman looked pretty good early. Uh, Austin Sindrick as well. AJ Umendinger had to start in the back. He worked his way up to like 19th before the green flag pit stops before the stage happened. Um, so yeah, like I said, Daniel Suarez won stage one. And then right after that, he gets spun in turn one after the stage resume after stage two starts. He gets spun, falls way back in the pack. Uh, blew a tire he had to limp the car all the way around the racetrack which is like three point something miles uh, i don't know how he got that car back to pit road without the tire exploding and tearing up the fender of the race car but good job props to him for getting the car back to pit road he didn't lose a lap because obviously coda is such a long racetrack so thankfully he was able to pit stay on the lead lap but he would be like 38th for all of stage two and some more strategy happened in stage two uh denny hamlin uh, Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, and Kyle Busch, I believe, were the first four that stayed out and got their stage points. So Denny Hamlin won his first stage of the season, and that's pretty much all we heard of Denny Hamlin all day. Uh, but yeah, he won the stage, got some points, as well as Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, and uh, Ryan Blaney, I believe. Uh, and then stage three is obviously where things get crazy. Uh, several drivers spun out throughout the stage. Uh, I know Austin Sindrick spun. He was in the top five or something on one of the restarts. He ended up spinning um, off of turn 10, heading to turn 11, I think. It was kind of a weird spot for him to spin out. Christopher Bell missed him by probably a foot. That was pretty crazy there. Uh, Eric Jones, he stalled on the backstretch. That brought a caution at some point. And during the race at this stage... Uh, Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe, and AJ Allmendinger were the three drivers at the front of the field. They seemed to be the most dominant cars. Uh, Daniel Suarez was still trying to get back through the field. I believe he got spun around again at some point in the race. Uh, but yeah, it was mostly Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe, and AJ Allmendinger at this point. Um, and late in the race, there was a very controversial call at first, but NASCAR overturned it. So uh, AJ Allmendinger and Chase Briscoe were running pretty close side by side going through the S's and AJ Allmendinger I guess got loose or something ran Chase Briscoe off the track and NASCAR said all week if you go off of the S's if your all four tires go to the left or right of the curb then you'll be penalized and you have to do a drive through penalty so initially NASCAR said Chase Briscoe had to come and serve a drive through penalty but thankfully a caution came out for uh, Corey LaJoy and under that caution, NASCAR was able to look at it and say, okay, well, A.J. Allmendinger kind of shoved Chase Briscoe off track. He didn't go off track on purpose, so they ended up taking that penalty back. In the end, it didn't really matter anyways because Chase Briscoe pitted under that caution, but I like that NASCAR uh, took that call back and didn't enforce it because he was indeed forced off the racetrack. Uh, there was a restart with three laps to go. 
At this point, it was Ross Chastain versus AJ Allmendinger. Uh, Allmendinger slowly and methodically made his way through the field all day. And then another caution came out on that restart. Uh, it involved Kyle Larson, Kurt Busch, and Tyler... No. Kyle Larson, Kurt Busch, Joey Logano. And Tyler Reddick actually took the lead at, before that caution came out because Ross Chastain shoved Allmendinger up the track and Reddick just went right on the inside of him and took the lead. So he had control for... The overtime restart so Tyler Reddick and Ross Chastain were on the front row for that restart turn one is just a crazy spot because it's so narrow but it's also so wide because when you come off the corner there's a spot where you can kind of fan out and they were three four five wide at a time going through turn one which is pretty crazy up that massive hill too so uh, on the overtime restart Ross Chastain jumped out to the lead and they were beating and banging Ross Chastain Tyler Reddick AJ Almanier. They were beating and banging their way through turn one, turn two into the S's. Chastain got out to the lead, and I thought he was I don't want to say he thought he had the race one, but he got out to a pretty far lead and he led coming to the white flag. Um, pretty much maintained his gap on AJ Almanier for the most part, and then getting into the I think it's called the stadium part of the racetrack, which is turns 13, 14, 15, 16, all those corners is where things got very interesting. So uh, AJ Allmendinger closed the gap pretty quickly, uh, severely outbreaked Ross Chastain, and going into, I don't know which corner it is, there's so many corners at this track I don't know, but um, AJ Allmendinger bumped Chastain pretty hard, got him out of the way, he gets to the lead, Ross Chastain's in second, and it, all of this is going on, Alex Bowman is hunt right there in third waiting for something to happen. Uh, Ross Chastain dr drives into the next corner. Alex Bowman hits him. He hits Alec Alex Bowman hits Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain hits Almendinger. And then Alex Bowman goes to the lead coming out of turn 18, going into turn 19. And Almendinger's in second. Ross Chastain's in third. Ross Chastain boots Almendinger back, gets him back. Almendinger gets up into Alex Bowman. Al Almendinger spins. Bowman has to go wide to avoid it. Ross Chastain drives through. He goes through turn 20. And uh, Ross Chastain, sorry, this is a lot. I'm trying to think back in my head without watching it. Ross Chastain would go on to win his first ever win for Team Trackhouse and his first career win, Trackhouse's first win. Crazy finish, one of the best road course races I've seen all year long. He got the watermelon at the end and uh, spiked it on the front stretch, which was really cool to see. So, very happy for um, Ross Chastain to get his first ever career win. Uh, I'll say more about it later because that was a lot talking through the race recap with you guys. So Matthew, go ahead and tell me what you think of this cup race and what you think of Ross Chastain getting his first ever win. Well, there's only one word I can say about this whole race. Wow. That's all I can say right there because this race had everything I was looking for in it. Involved strategy and there was side-by-side -side racing there was bump bumpers getting together there was last lap drama I mean and crazy race starts I mean there this race was amazing I mean I know last year it was the inaugural race but that race kind of let a bad taste to some people as it was raining there and then drivers didn't know how to drive in the rain and it was just a mess that race last year, but um, thankfully today was sunny, so we got to finish the whole race this year, and man, what we got was amazing. I mean, track house this year has shocked everyone. I mean, it's not just Ross Chastain. Daniel Suarez has also had a lot of speed, too. I mean, it was shown today in the first stage. He was... Leading all the lap, he led like the first laps of, of the race, basically leading to the end of the first stage. And Ross Chastain has had a string of three straight top fives before this race, or top three finishes to be more impressive. But um, Chunk House is legit this year, and I cannot wait to see how this team does the rest of the season. Now that they finally got that first win. If that momentum is just going to keep getting better. If Ross Chastain going to win more races. Is Daniel Suarez going to win his first cup win. And here's the youth the youth movement is getting even bigger now. 
I mean, three three winners out of the six that have won this season are first time winners now. And I don't think that's the last. I mean, you still got Tyler Reddick who was up there today. You had Daniel. You still have Daniel Suarez is up there today, and it's it's just it's just amazing to see. Having more winners is really big for NASCAR because it helps the the diver the basically um get more fans for a certain driver because lately it's been a bunch of Hendrick fans because they want they've been winning a lot of races and Joe Gibbs. But now you got like Austin Cindric winning, Chase Briscoe winning, uh Ross Chastain winning and even um I mean I know Ty Reich hasn't won but he's going to. So it's it's helping the fan base too because with these drivers being more competitive and winning now, those drivers I just named down, they're going to gain more fans that way, and that's going to be really helpful for the NASCAR fan base to grow. So that's real positive to see. And man, we, I mean, I, I I'm I'm just shocked by that whole last lap. AJ Allmendinger was basically in the top five almost all day, besides the start of the race, which he had to start at the back, but. I actually thought Oma Digger had that race won there until um he kinda of, he kinda of was a little slow in those last couple of turns and then Ross Chastain got in the back of him. That whole move was it's gonna be controversial, but I think it was fair because AJ Oma did put did put the bumper on Ross Chastain on that last lap and Ross Chastain paid the favor back, so I thought that was fair in my opinion. Of course, people are going to think it's dirty as always, but it is what it is. But congratulations to Ross Chastain on his first Cup win. I think he's going to win. I think after what we've seen the start of the season, I think he's going to win more races this year. Not just road courses, but like mile and a half, short tracks. He just has so much to the start of the season, and I cannot wait to see how he does. Will he become a championship contender? Will he be a, a big playoff contender? I guess we'll see. And I can't, and I think Daniel Suarez will win this this, this year because he's also shown a lot of speed. California, he almost won that race with Kyle Larson, and he was up front for for uh, Coda, and he could have been up there a lot more if he didn't get spun out, unfortunately. But I think his time is coming as well. So this is a big day, and it's a big day when you see a brand new team winning. This is only their second season, and it, it felt like yesterday when their very first slaps that they led was at Bristol Dirt with Suarez. So hard to believe today they just won their first Cup race. So I cannot wait to see how this team does for the future. And let's we'll see if Pitbull throws a concert after this win tonight. <laughs> yeah, Pitbull might have to drop a single. With like uh, Rosh Chastain and Daniel Suarez in it, he'll have to drop like a music video and all that kind of stuff. I, I wish he was there at the track; that would have been really cool to see him celebrate with the team. But Justin Marks was there, obviously, and it was really cool to see him celebrate with the team. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot more success coming for Trackhouse. I think they just had to get the one win, and I think they'll they might they could win a few more races this year, but. I think, you know, getting that first win is always good, and then after that, more wins start coming. Um, and, yeah, it's crazy that there's three first-time winners in the first six races of the season, and not also not to mention that all of those drivers, and going into last year, there's a bunch of, I think it's like 11 or 12 races in a row now that have all been won by drivers under 30. Uh, Ross Chastain is right under that mark. He's 29, but still, it just shows the current youth movement in the NASCAR Cup Series, and how much talent these young drivers have and how the next gen car equalizes mm -hmm. everybody so a lot of young drivers getting some wins remember uh 2018 when they were basically marketing all the young drivers that were coming in at that time and basically kyle bush kevin harvey martin Truex jr ended up winning all the races basically it feels like this year is basically that year that the youth movement's really taking shape now because we're seeing a lot more younger drivers winning now basically yeah that and like young drivers in general getting their first ever win like you know um Rosh Hussain obviously um Allison Sindrick, Chase Briscoe and potentially more like you had mentioned Tyler Reddick, Daniel Suarez and others so very cool to see all these young drivers get their first career wins this season 
and the racing was it was perfect today I don't really have one complaint for this race today uh, let me quickly go over the top 10 and then we'll rate the race so uh, for the top 10 Rosh Chastain getting the win obviously Alex Bowman did end up finishing second after the whole final lap debacle uh, Christopher Bell somehow finished third he was kind of I, he was up there in the top five or top ten late in the race. I guess he just kind of snuck his way up there in the final few laps. Chase Elliott finished fourth. Tyler Reddick fifth. Ryan Blaney sixth. Martin Truex Jr. seventh. Austin Cindric eighth. Eric Jones somehow finished ninth after stalling on the track on the backstretch. I don't know how he finished ninth, but props to him. So I don't. I have no idea how that happened, but that's cool. Uh, Austin Dillon ended up rounding out the top ten. So quite some, you know. I mean, this is honestly a normal top 10, surprisingly. This isn't like a crazy top 10. Obviously, AJ Allmendinger would have been up there if he didn't get involved in that accident. Uh, Daniel Suarez could have been up there as well. But a lot of normal cup drivers in this top 10, surprisingly, besides, you know, Eric Jones, Austin Dillon, uh, Alex Bowman, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, there's the top 10 for you guys. Um, let's rate this race. Man, I'm I'm excited. This is a really good race. Um Lots of good racing. Not really too many complaints with the next-gen car today. A uh, few accidents. Lots of intense restarts going into turn one, especially. So, for me, man, I think I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. I don't think there's much that could have went, that went wrong in this race today. I'm just going to give it a 9.5 out of 10 because there could be some things a little, a little bit better. You know, I... I jinxed myself last year and said that uh, the Xfinity Bristol race wouldn't happen again, and it did a few weeks later at Talladega on the trucks. So uh, I'm going to give this race a 9.5 out of 10, near perfect, just because I think something else crazy could happen throughout the season. So I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Matthew, what are you going to go ahead and rate this race? Well, I'm going to go all out on this one. I'm going 10 out of 10 on this one. This race was a great amazing way to show how these next-gen cars race on the road courses and after seeing this race I cannot wait for the other road courses this year like Road America, Sonoma, Indy Road Course, the Charlotte Roval is already exciting from the past couple from I mean the Charlotte Roval has already been exciting with the Gen 6 I cannot wait to see how it is with these cars so I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 I mean, it might be a little bit high for some people, but I, I, that was just an amazing race. They had everything that I wanted, basically. Yeah, that's everything we want to see in a road course race. And hopefully I should be going back to the uh, Indy road course again this summer, hopefully. So if that happens, I can't wait You're to see. You're going to take me there? I can't wait to see how good the racing is there. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that happens. But yeah, uh, also, so I'll be going to Richmond this weekend and then both of us will be at Martinsville the weekend after that so we should be getting some good content for you guys from the track there it will be our first time seeing the next gen car on track and in person and everything so that'll be really cool uh but very quickly uh talking about our fantasy points and man we were up and down all day long I had faith in Daniel Suarez after he got spun I kept him in my lineup and I took Chase Briscoe so out of I. my I took Chase Briscoe out of my lineup and I thought that was gonna bite me in the butt because Chase Briscoe was up in the top two or three the whole time until then he had that penalty that got reversed and then he pitted and he dropped way back. So it was a crazy day for both, all of our fantasy lineups, but I ended up getting 171 points a day. You got 137 points a day, so now that puts me at 1,046 and you're at 1,003. So I got a little bit more of a gap on you today, but obviously a lot more can happen this season. So uh, yeah. That's it for our fantasy race review, all that kind of stuff. Matthew, do you have any other closing thoughts before you go ahead and wrap the episode up? Uh, just one. Um, Toyo this year in the Cup Series sucks. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought of the race in Coda down below. I saw some stuff on social media saying, you know, that stock cars didn't belong on a Formula 1 track, so... After today, I think, I don't see... It's just people, damn, like, it's just those typical people who love their mile and a half, so they're missing their nap time, basically. I don't see why NASCAR doesn't belong at Coda after today, especially. It was a great race, put on a great show, great finish as well. 
Um, but yeah, make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel. We should have a lot of at the track content coming for you guys soon. But until next time, we will see you guys in our next video.